interim athletic director. Uh, so I'm a little louder than Carlton, a little more direct, and the coaches will tell you if your cell phone's out right now, I'm going to probably laser foresight you with my eyes right now. You put your phones away, turn them off. I know the coaches are laughing a little bit. But I've been the uh, AD for about four weeks, a little over four weeks. And uh, I've been around uh, Bain Athletics for about, uh, for about 12 years now, both through the NROTC and then from doing some other things on campus, most recently as the Chief of Staff for uh, President Hunter. So I've had the opportunity to observe you, to speak before, to, to actually I spoke at, uh, as a keynote. So you guys gave me more than five minutes. Poor JoJo gets five minutes today. So the less I speak, the longer he gets to go on. But, uh, but I've been around athletics, around Black Bear Athletics for, uh, for quite a while. In the four weeks, I realized how little I knew before and how very, very cool uh, it is to be a student athlete here and how very, very cool it is to be the athletic director and be involved with all of you. I have this habit of, uh, in my leadership style, of memorizing names, families, my wife will laugh, names, families, your partner's name, where you live, where you went to school, your fight song, what your dog or cat's name is. Evan's getting a little worried because I'm going to tell him about the cats that uh, he has at home. Um, but one thing I do, and then now the next thing, and I've done that with all the coaches and staff, so over 90 names I've memorized so far uh, in cats and dogs. Now I'm working on students. What I do know is, and I hope you don't mind, there are 62 students in this room that are seniors that I'm never going to memorize your name because I don't have to. And I'll get shit if I do or not. So I'm an old Navy guy, so I swear once in a while. You didn't, Sam, you didn't get that, did you? Sam gets everything. Hey guys, but welcome, welcome to the M Club. Good to see them back here. The coaches, the staff, faculty but the most importantly in the student athletes. And thank you for the time that you've given to the University of Maine, to Black Bear Athletics over the last four or five years. Now, you know, we got a hell of a commencement coming up here in what? Less than four weeks now, right? Three and a half weeks? About freaking time, isn't it? Yeah, no kidding. So, that means hurry up, or that means you're hungry. We're eating, we're hungry. <laughs> Uh, so, but thank you very much. I think I've got about two minutes left before I get into JoJo's time here, so I do want to introduce the first person that's going to come up and speak, Mary Mahoney O'Neill. Mary Mahoney O'Neill is the uh, faculty liaison of the football team. She is also um, the, uh, one of the uh, senior deans over in uh, College of Education and Human Development. She's also a long-term friend. You guys have learned a lot of values over the years, one of them is teamwork and, and loyalty to your teammates and what it's like. And in the world I came from, in a squadron, I used to fly off carriers, that was everything. You had to rely. If you didn't, if your teammate let you down, sometimes you died. Um, what I do know is that Mary is one of the coolest teammates I have ever had, and we will do an awful lot for each other. Three years ago, she asked if I would shave my head on main day for St. Baldrick's. And after I said no, she challenged me to an arm wrestling match. I lost. I had to shave my head. Two years ago, I did the dunk tank with her. But did I ask you or did you ask me? You asked me. All right, so we did the dunk tank for, uh, for to raise money also. Um, last year, she asked me to do the dunk tank one more time. I said yes. She bailed at the last second. So, so much for that teamwork and loyalty thing. I do know, by the way, that Mary Mahoney O'Neill is one of the coolest people on campus, one of the most dedicated educators that we have and loves Black Bear athletics, uh, athletics and athletes as much as anybody else on campus. Mary, over to you. Thank, Thank you for coming. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Thank you so much for the honor to be here with you this evening. I am going to point that out in just one second. Uh, I want to say thank you for uh, having me here this evening, but also I want to take my hat off to you. You are remarkable athletes, remarkable students, and remarkable ambassadors for the University of Maine, and we're so grateful. Truly, the work that you do and the commitment that you have to this university makes coming to work every day great for many of us. So thank you. For those of you in the College of Education and Human Development, especially thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so the title um, of my remarks this evening are going to be Perspective is Everything. So Lynn Coots, um, I had the honor truly of being asked to speak at a graduation ceremony last year. And Lynn Coots heard me speak. And she said, I really want you to come and speak to the senior athlete night at UMaine. And I said, oh my gosh, I would love to do that. So those remarks that evening were about 22 minutes long. 
and tonight they're going to be about eight minutes long. So I've written a, an entire news story for you. So to just to set the stage a little bit about this place that you've called home for the last four or more years and the exquisite natural beauty that is this area, the sky, the stars, the fresh air, the trees, the rivers, the wildlife. I want to share a family story with you that I hope you're going to find amusing, um, certainly at my expense probably. Um, and I'm going to attempt to weave the magic that is this physical place that you've spent your time here for the past four years with some wisdom to give you, I hope, as you get ready into the next adventure of your life. Um, and hopefully you're going to take a piece of this institution with you. So just to give you a little bit of a background, um, about 12 years ago, I was out on our front lawn with some of our children. And my husband's a very mellow guy. And he looked at me and he goes, grab the baby. And so you don't even think in those moments, you grab the baby, right? I mean, you don't, you're not, no thoughts. You grab the baby. I scooped up the baby who was two years old at the time. And I missed the entire thing. But a hawk had swooped down and had plucked this bird out of a bush that was standing, that was next to me. And the only thing I saw, and the only thing that little Luke saw at two years old was this poof. And these beautiful blue feathers went flitting to the ground and the bird was gone. That hawk grabbed that bird and was, was gone, and was gone. So just think for a minute, like you never know for any of you that are gonna work with children, you never know the moment that they're gonna retain. You just don't know. So I just want you to look at this slide just for a minute and remember it as we go into this story, okay? Okay, so this story happened about 11 and a half years ago. My husband and I and our four kids, at the time they were aged 19, 11, seven, and three. And we were going to mass on Christmas Eve on Indian Island. So Indian Island, as you know, is the home of the Penobscot Nation of the Wabanaki. Um, and it's located on the Penobscot River, right just across the way, very close. So St. Anne's Church stands on Indian Island today, and it was built in 1828. And it is said to have been commissioned by President George Washington late in his presidency. So try to picture this, OK? So I'm going to bring you to this place, and hopefully you take a piece of it with you. So you're driving across the bridge right from Old Town onto Indian Island. Can you picture that? OK, so as soon as you cross that bridge to Indian Island, there's a really small church, and it appears on your right immediately as you get onto Indian Island. So on that particular night, I'm really going to try and take you back to a physical place. So on that particular night, outside of the church, um, it was snowing, and it was so beautiful. The river was starting to freeze, and it was roaring. Have you ever heard that river roar in the winter? It was roaring. Um, towards the sea. It was bitter cold um, and the wind was just howling. So you just could not wait to get inside. Okay, so inside the church, this is kind of picture this. So the church is post-American Revolution, right? So it's very, very simple and it's very, very small and my family is very, very big. So I remember thinking as we stepped in the door like, wow, it is so crowded. Um, and we're an hour early, which is always thrilling when you have um, a group of small children with you. And I looked from the back and I said, you know, oh my gosh, is there any seats? And guess what? There was one row left. Can any of you guess which was the empty row that was left? In the front row. Okay, so you're with me now. So we line everyone up, we walk into the church, and we sit down in the very, very front row. So. Here's what we hear and see when we're there, right? So the lights are down, and the only light in the church were the candles burning in the windows. And it was just beautiful. It was very quiet. And in the front, directly in front of us, was this huge lectern, kind of like this. But it was a giant glass box. And in that giant glass box, with the microphone on the top, was a bald eagle huge I had no idea how huge they are but it's it's huge and it's in this glass box and we're seated directly in front of it and then next to that exquisitely beautiful bald eagle is this beautiful nativity scene so it's a native man a native woman and a baby right and the baby's in a manger and the only sound 
in this church, truly, if you can picture it, think of the cold main night, it's snowing, it's beautiful. And the only sound are the Penobscot drummers. If you've never heard them, I hope you can someday. And they were playing Silent Night. It was truly, um, and I don't use this word um, lightly or easily, it was the closest thing to a sacred moment I've ever experienced. It was truly, truly beautiful. And then in that silence, right, in the silence that is that place, I hear this voice ring out in the silence. That hawk's gonna come down and eat that baby Jesus. <laughs> so in my shock, right, I'm like, what? What did, you, what did you just say? And my son, who was almost three years old at that time, belts out truly in a voice I didn't even know the child had because he's a gentle giant, he's a big kid, but he's got this tiny little voice. And he said at the top of his lungs, when I say the top of his lungs, I mean it. Remember how quiet it is in there. That hawk's gonna come down and eat that baby Jesus. <laughs> Okay, so I'm dying, I'm dying. I'm so embarrassed, I'm so embarrassed. And I'm thinking like, what is worse is I catch my husband's face looking at me and the horror and disgust on Bob's face is not at Luke for yelling that, it's at me for asking him to repeat his words. <laughs> okay, so I'm like self-assured, right? I've been a mom for 19 years, I've been a mom of four kids and at this point, um, I should know what I'm doing, right? I got this. So I decided to explain to Luke um, that that bird was not a hawk. That's not a hawk, honey. That's a bald eagle, and it's simply dead. <laughs> um, it's been gutted and stuffed. And I went on to give what I would say um, was an Emmy award-winning explanation of taxidermy that I could have been on the National Geographic special. But unfortunately, when I was done with this excellent and vivid description, Luke was transitioning from aware and concerned about baby Jesus to totally terrified. Um, so I look up from Luke's now on the pew, and he's got his hands wrapped around my head and face and neck. So I'm like a pro wrestling hold that I'm held in. And I look out, and now remember, I'm in the front row and I see my seven-year-old looking at me. So if he's looking at me, that means he's looking at the church full of people, right? So um, I look up through, and I see this look on William's face, and William's this gentle boy of seven at the time, and his face says to me, no words, but his face says to me, oh, we're doing this, and we're doing it right now, Mom. So here's where the humility lesson comes in for you all. Um, so remember we're in the front row and he points at me in front of all these people who are now listening because the place has been laughing and they're chuckling and there's been a couple pats on our backs. And he says to me, Luke, she does not know what she's talking about. That bird is made out of wood just like those little dolls and it is not going to come down and eat the baby Jesus. And then he said something for seven years older so that was pretty good. He said, um, Jesus has a lot of bad things happen to him in his life, and we're not going to let anything happen to him tonight. So now people are outwardly laughing, like out loud, okay? So I'm like, on one hand, I am proud, right? Like, oh my gosh, my three-year-old knows who the baby Jesus is, and we've been late to church every single day, Sunday of his entire life, so, but he knows who baby Jesus is, that's pretty good. And his big brother, who's only seven, He's got a pretty good perspective, right, on life. He stepped in and he took over. But on the other hand, um, I'm beyond embarrassed as my face is probably red now. It was even more red then. And because we've made a spectacle of ourselves in front of the entire congregation on a really beautiful night on Christmas Eve, uh, and also maybe because I have really seriously been schooled by a seven-year-old, um, publicly humiliated pretty much in front of everyone because he basically called me a moron in front of the congregation, which um, he was correct. I was because I did not use my head. So when he hears the part in the talk that I want to talk about perspective, I want to tell you about what happened to us next. So the congregation went to communion and as they were leaving communion, they have to pass us in the front row. 
And this elderly man from um, Indian Island came over to us. And for a moment, I did feel fear. I'm going to be honest, because I didn't know if I was like, going like, to be yelled at or, you know, you should have taken your kids out of here. Um, but he smiled at me, and he was very, very sweet. Um, and he shuffled over, and he put his hand on top of Luke's head. And Luke was three, uh, almost three at the time. And he said, you will be a brave warrior of wisdom. You will see things that people don't take the time to see. And then he put his other hand, or want the same hand actually, on William's head. And he said to William, you will be a protector. You're going to watch over the most vulnerable, big and small. So that perspective and those words of that moment are words that I've repeated to those two sons who are now 14 and 6 foot 4 and almost 19, 19 on Friday and 6 foot 2. And because I wanted them to become words that they believed about themselves that someone saw in them a potential that was seen in them. So this kind of brings me back to the message that I wanted to share with you tonight, that you could take a piece with you as you jump into the next adventure. Perspective truly is everything. So number one, take risks. Sit in the front row. Sit in the front row. Do the things that challenge you and that make you uncomfortable. That's right, right there. Um, number two, allow yourselves to live authentically. Allow yourself that gift. To begin with, consider putting your phones away in your life. Take the time to recognize and soak in the true beauty that is surrounds you every single day. Number three, if you owe someone an apology, offer it up. It will be one of the most powerful gifts you'll ever give to yourself and to that other person, even if it's the simplest thing. It's really powerful. Uh, when you make a mistake, which you will, because we all do every day, have the courage to own it. Truly own it. Make it right and then let it go. If you get lost, be brave and ask for help. And that's really hard. It's really hard as adults to ask for help. But be brave and ask for help. Have people in your life that will be honest enough with you that when you lose your way, they aren't going to tell you what you want to hear. They're going to tell you what you need to hear. And lastly, in life, this is my last thought for you to take with you. There are always going to be hawks. In every part of your life, there are hawks. So my simple message for you is look out for each other. And thank you so much for having me here tonight. For those of you I have not had the opportunity to meet, my name is Buffy McHugh. I work in athletics. Thank you very much, Jim, for the warm welcome. We're so very glad to have you on board. And thank you, Mary, for that wonderful, wonderful um, talk. I think that was, I don't know that I'm going to be able to top that. So please be kind to me. I have a little bit of a cold, so if I go off coughing, somebody jump up and read the rest of the script for me. And I will do my very best to get everyone's name correct, but please be kind to me. Um, at this point, I would like to invite um, Jojo Oliphant, who is a 2000 grad from the University of Maine, former football player, and Danielle Ahern from 2000, who was a former uh, field hockey player, and they're going to welcome you to the University of Maine Alumni Association. I was kind of hoping that Jim would shame Jojo into taking the full five minutes, but... Uh, so welcome, congratulations. I feel like uh, when you talk about perspective, every time I walk in this building, I'm like, man, where did those last 18 years go? But 2000 was a good year, so yes, congratulations on your um, pending graduation. And welcome to the Alumni Association. So as student athletes, you're now members of the M Club organization, but you're also members of the Greater Alumni Association uh, for the University of Maine, which is 107,000 members strong. So no matter where you go, when you leave here, we have uh, alumni uh, events and activities coast to coast. So uh, for me, um, being a former student athlete, it was a really great opportunity to network professionally. So keep in mind that as you're out and you will be looking for jobs, that uh, reach out to your alumni association and try to connect with those alumni folks as you're out in the area. Um, Jojo? 
Jim, I was actually going to bail on the speech, but shamed him. Uh, yeah, actually, we have five minutes, so we wanted to be real quick. Um, I just want to say congratulations to everyone. Um, you guys never should bail on your classmates, your friends, and Jim is right. Uh, you know, you guys support each other. That's why I'm here, because I always wanted to support other students of University of Maine, because people supported me when I was here, just like Danielle and everybody else. So congratulations, and good luck. Yeah. Thank you very much, Jojo and Danielle. Um, there are countless hours spent in the weight room, on the practice field, traveling to and from competitions, the competitions themselves, and those are filled with thousands of teachable moments. The driving force behind those moments are motivating student athletes, and those come from the coaches. The coaches want to thank each of you for your commitment that you've given to the program, the institution, and the community. Thank you, Maine Baseball seniors, for the hard work, for your perseverance, and uh... thank you, Maine Baseball seniors, for the hard work, for your perseverance, and uh, helping establish a culture here that everyone can be proud of. Looking forward to seeing you guys continue on your path in life, and um, go Black Bears! Thank you to our seniors for their four years of hard work and dedication. Congratulations to our seniors, Garvey and Ilker and Aaron. Great careers for all of you. Thanks for all the hard work you put in. Good luck to all the seniors and congratulations. Hi everybody, my name's Red Gendron, men's ice hockey coach. I want to say thank you to our four seniors this year who've presided over resurgence in our program and we're deeply grateful for all of your contributions. Cedric Lacroix, Mark Hamilton, Nolan Vesey, and Malcolm Hayes. Once again, thank you very much. Amy, Kendra, Jenea, Rachel, uh, as you know, this is a very bittersweet time. Um, bitter in the sense that you're leaving us and we'll miss you. Sweet in the sense that your life is just beginning and all of your successes lie ahead of you. Uh, we wish you nothing but the best. We love you and please come back and see us as you're always part of our Black Bear family. Hello, cross country and track and field or should I say field and track uh, seniors. Uh, congratulations on surviving four or five years with us. Sometimes it's, uh, we, I don't know how many it's been. Um, good luck in the uh, great wide world. Think of us every once in a while and remember the Stein song. Seniors, what's up? Coach Arasimiak. Um Just want to take this opportunity and this time to, to thank you for everything that you've done for us in this program. I think one of the coolest experiences as a coach is when you guys come in as freshmen, not knowing what's going on, um, have a lot of things going on in your life, first time away from home, uh, we take you in, we become your second family, and we watch you grow and develop here. And I think that's been one of the most uh, special uh, times for me as, as your head coach and, and as your assistant coach over the past couple of years, is to see you grow and develop into who you are today. Um, I just want to thank you. Uh, the other coaches want to thank you. We thank your, your parents, your families, for everything they've done for us, for all the travel that they've put up with. And we wish you the best in the future. And if there's anything Black Bear football can ever do for you, don't hesitate to ask us. Love you guys. I just wanted to thank our seniors. It's a really special group for me and Sarah. Uh, they came in our first year when we kind of took over the program, uh, worked extremely hard, been through ups and downs. Uh, and we're really proud the the development that they took part of in our program. You know, having a very successful season this year. Uh, and the first really group ever in UMaine women's hockey to finish their last game in the Elfon on a win. Uh, a big thank you to our seniors. Uh, we only have three of them this year, a small class, but thank you to Emma and Emily for coming back for their fifth year and helping uh, Phil Madison's class uh, since she was really the only true senior this year. Uh, you guys have just been great for our program. Uh, great representatives, great competitors, just had great playing careers and outstanding in the classroom. Just want to congratulate you guys on uh, being great students and just thank you for, for representing our program well. 
Good evening. First of all, congratulations to all the seniors on outstanding careers at the University of Maine. Enjoy your special night. Second, on behalf of myself and my staff, I'd like to give our seniors a heartfelt thank you for everything you've done. Your hard work and dedication has taken our program to a level it's never been at, and your commitment and loyalty to your teammates will never be forgotten. Remember two things, always be a giver and always live where your feet are. Black Bear Tough. Hey KJ, I uh, just want to thank you so much for everything you've done. Uh, for our program and for the university during your four years at the University of Maine. Uh, to see you grow so much as a person um, has just been incredible. You know, you went from a goofy freshman to a, to a leader uh, your senior year. And so it's just been so much fun to see you grow as a person. Um, it, I'm so happy that you were able to go out your senior year with a championship. Uh, you worked so hard and deserve that. And so um, we will miss you. Uh, know that you are always welcome back. You'll always be a part of Black Bear Nation. And uh, you know, you, you already have your job lined up. And so just really, really happy for you and proud of you and can't, see, can't wait to see what you do in the future. is full of many thank yous. Um, next, I would like to have a special thank you for the M Club. The M Club was kind enough to provide all of the letters for the M plaques this evening. So if you would, M Club board, if you could please stand and be recognized for the group to see. Just stand up and give a wave. M Club board members, please. Um, and at this time, we have a special thank you and welcome from M Club President Will Rogers. I welcome all you seniors and congratulate you on your accomplishments. You're being welcomed as new members of the M Club. The M Club has been an active club since 1932, and we have 5,000 living members out there. So, congratulations. The M Club programs are the Silver and Gold Breakfast, where we honor 25 and 50 year old alumni. I'd like to welcome all you seniors and congratulate you on your accomplishments. You're being welcomed as new members of the M Club. The M Club has been an active club since 1932, and we have 5,000 living members out there. So, congratulations. The M Club programs are the Silver and Gold Breakfast, where we honor 25 and 50 year old alumni during the homecoming weekend. We have the Dean Smith Academic Awards, which this year there was over 250 applicants that uh, were rewarded that evening. The Senior Gala, where we'll give plaques to all the seniors. That happens tonight, along with the M Club pin. We support the Hall of Fame in the fall, where we'll, this year we'll be honoring nine inductees. These are all former athletes who were fantastic in their years here at Maine. We support all the teams, and now we ask, as new alumni, you to support us and be involved and be part of the 5,000 members. In the <clears throat> next year, you'll receive a membership letter requesting $20, $35 in dues. Those dues go to support all the teams and all the activities of the M Club. We're looking for young and vibrant people to be involved, so if you're interested, seek me out and talk to me. I'd love to talk to you. Again, congratulations, and let's have a wonderful evening. Thank you. And then move to the back of the room, back to your seat if you would, so you don't cross in front of the stage. We will begin this evening with uh, women's soccer. So if you could join us, please. <laughs> Women's soccer, come on up. So, Will, if you want to follow. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> we'll get a system going here, okay? <laughs> Amy Falcon. <laughs> we'll get it. <laughs> Janaea Loftus. Thank you. 
Rachel Preble. Kendra Ridley. Up next is football, please. Are we good? We got a system? Yeah. Okay. In front of us? Like, First up from football, Drew Belcher. Benjamin Davis. Angelo Dawson. Jeffrey Devon. Darius Hart. Cody Levy. Andrew Stevens. Connor Walsh. Michael Wright. Sam Lenson. Yo, thank you so much. I'm sorry. It's okay. Don't worry about it. What's your name? Sam Lenson. Sam. Sam. It doesn't matter. It does matter. <laughs> Sam Lenson. Sam Lenson. Perfect. Sorry, Sam. You're good. Don't worry about Be kind to me. You're good. Congratulations, football. <laughs> Members of the field hockey program. <laughs> Emma Cochran. <laughs> Madison Cummings. Thank you, field hockey. <laughs> Men's and women's swimming and diving. <laughs> Kevin Klein. Stephen Como, Connor Mayhew, Alexander Penn, Chloe Adams. Emily Borger, <laughs> Victoria Kingston, <laughs> Julia McDonald, <laughs> Megan O'Neill. Mariah Pomanova, <laughs> Emma Pontius, <Hello. 
congratulations, men's, women, men's and women's swimming and diving. <laughs> women's basketball. <laughs> Kirsten Johnson. Therese Rosignol. <laughs> Tanisha Sutton. Congratulations, women's basketball. <laughs> women's ice hockey. Kristen Gilmore. Victoria Hummel. Michaela Rogers. Brooke Stacy. Catherine Tufts. Congratulations, women's ice hockey. Men's ice hockey. Mark Hamilton. <laughs> Malcolm Hayes. <laughs> Cedric LaCroix. <laughs> Nolan Vesey. Congratulations, men's ice hockey. <laughs> Track and field and cross country. All of you. Devin Burgess, Jacob Johns, Adam Lovkin, Kelby Mace. Logan Moses. <laughs> Alexander Wortman. Eliza Yabua. <laughs> Isaac Yaboa. Rachel Bergeron. Brianna Dagon. 
Cassandra Howard. No. <laughs> Tia Jackson. <laughs> Jillian Larry. <laughs> Caitlin Salter. <laughs> Sinclair Tasker. David Glassberg. Thank you, track and field, cross country, baseball. John R.L. Christopher Beck. Jonathan Bennett. Justin Courtney. Connor Johnson. Christopher Murphy, Jonah Normando, Brendan Bison, Zachary Wynn. Congratulations, baseball. So softball could not join us and men's basketball could not either, but I'd like to read their names. Rachel Carlson, Sarah Coyne, Julia Ferguson, Molly Flowers, Faith Goines, Ann Kennedy, Erica Leonard, and Kristen Nyland from softball. Congratulations, softball. Men's basketball, Aaron Calixti, Elker Err, Garvey Melmed. Congratulations, men's basketball. <laughs> Thank you to Academic Services for your help, for the M Club for your help handing those out. Thank you, Joshua. With all the hours the students spend to become a Division I athlete, there are many, many more hours spent in preparation behind the scenes. At this time, the students would like to thank those who have had a hand in their success as a student and as a student athlete. As a student athlete here for the past four years, I can honestly say one person cannot run this program, so it takes a village, and I want to thank everybody that helped the seniors over the last four years, from the training staff, coaches, uh, academic support. Without you guys, we wouldn't be here. Uh, Y'all all gave us a chance and opportunity to come here to Maine and have fun and enjoy the past four years. And hopefully, as a future alumni, we can build on this and help the future out. Thank you. I just wanted to thank all the faculty liaisons for supporting us over the past four years. Thank you to all the assistant coaches for all your support on and off the ice over my four years. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you so much to all the strength and conditioning coaches for helping us grow and develop over the past four years. So I want, to, I want to give a huge thank you to the grounds crew uh, and even the rink staff. You know, the grounds crew does a whole lot for us. Uh, getting ready to play baseball in the Northeast uh, late March, early April is a huge task, you know, and, uh, and we really appreciate all the help and, and even seeing you guys at games, you know, if, if something ever comes up with our field and uh, just the support that you give us uh, is, is really appreciated and, and all your hard work really does not go unnoticed, you know. Uh, 
from all of us at Maine Baseball and, and even the softball programs that, that are on that field every day and uh, even the soccer team in the fall, we, we really appreciate all the help and all the support you give us. I'd also like to thank the academic staff. I know we don't have Olivia anymore, but um, Ann and, and Lauren, you guys have been great help, a great help for me you know, getting through school and everything. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Kristen Island. I'm a senior from the softball team, and I want to give a big thank you to the business office for all your support and hard work over these last four years. My name is Kendra Ridley, and I play women's soccer. I just want to thank the equipment room and the staff so much for their help over the past four years, getting us ready for games and practices. I'm Logan Moses. I'm a senior on the track team, and I'd like to thank the compliance office for all the support throughout the years. Thank you assistant coaches and operation directors for everything you've done for me in the past four years. Your help means a lot. Thank you to our donors, fans, and the entire Black Bear Nation to the support you've given us over the last four years that I've been here. I'd like to thank Black Bear Sports Properties for all the love and support you've given uh, the programs over the past four years since I've been here. Thank you. We have just a few more thank yous on the list. If um, Sinclair, Tasker, and Jeff Devon could stand up for just a moment. So these two student athletes helped put this event on tonight. I think it turned out very well. So if we could give a big round of applause to thank both of them. Thank you. A special thank you to the SAC leadership group who helped check you in to make sure you knew where you were going this evening. And they'll, they'll be the ones planning theirs next year. So a special wave in the back. Thank you very much, SAC leadership. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you to Sue and Cherry for their help in um, getting the M plaques organized today. It was extremely helpful. So thank you for all you do for us. In closing, I'd like to thank all the seniors, the coaches, the staff, the administration for your dedication, the toughness you exude, the pride you demonstrate, and all the resourcefulness you exhibit. Once a black bear, always a black bear. Be well and come back often to Black Bear Nation. Thank you. Thank you all very much.